Hi, my name is Jason Hardink. I hold the position of principal keyboard in the Utah Symphony. I first started playing the piano around age seven. Uh, I don't really come from a musical family per se. It was more of a um, situation where my dad listened to lots of like Neil Young and 70s rock when I was a kid and tried to play along with the guitar. And I was uh, always correcting him because <laughs> he could never figure out his chords. And uh, so luckily my parents' reaction to that was, let's get this kid some music lessons. And uh, it kind of worked out for me. So the first time I really seriously considered even the thought of like, wow, not only is this fun, but there are people out there who, who are better than me and they, they, you could make a career doing this. I went to like a summer camp, University of New Hampshire after my freshman year of high school. So that was kind of my first, uh, the first time I met other kids like me and thought, wow, this is so cool. I may want to really pursue this. The way I found out about this job opening is a complete accident, and it was like a perfect moment in my life because I, I went to, to Rice, which is a, a school that has a, a music school with a great orchestra program, and I was one of the people who was um, kind of enlisted to play in the orchestra, and I, there were like some carrots dangled, like, oh, if you play in the orchestra, then maybe we'll do Petrushka or Oiseau Exotique or some other like big feature but you're gonna have to suffer through all the other parts. And that's the way it was for me in, in college was I kind of resented having to play an orchestra. Um, and then this job came open and I thought I've been doing this uh, throughout my sort of grad school career. And actually now that I look back on it, it was fun. So I, why don't I take this audition? Um, the fact is, these auditions, uh, auditions for these kinds of keyboard spots and orchestras rarely come up. I mean, there are orchestras, major orchestras, that don't really have a principal keyboard spot because they want to hire a specialist for each and every type of, you know, we're going to hire a jazz pianist for this, we're going to hire a harpsichordist for that, an organ player for that. Um, so actually, some of the major orchestras don't have this position. And then at this level, lucky enough, this orchestra does, and here I am. The title of my job, Principal Keyboard, means that, almost like a percussionist, I'm responsible for an array of instruments. You know, when we're playing a, a Bach cantata or a Brandenburg concerto, I'm there playing continuo on the harpsichord, sort of adding this percussive element to a texture that's mainly strings and winds. If I'm playing the celesta, which is a sort of high, sparkly, uh, glittery instrument, uh, in terms of the way that composers usually use it, um, then I'm usually adding a color that it adds a sheen of brightness to other sounds that, that instruments are um, making in the orchestra. And then the piano, of course, is an incredibly versatile instrument that composers use for all types of things. You can call on your pianist to do anything from like play brilliant cadenzas to just a, a soft, sound in the bass register that's supposed to blend in with the gong and the basses and is just supposed to add color to that resonance. One of the things I love about my job is I get to come work with this big group of people. I feel very lucky that I have that group connection that a lot of pianists don't get to have. I think about um, parts that even on the page aren't, don't especially look hard, like something like Shostakovich Sixth Symphony, which has the, a celeste part where all you do is trill on the, trill on the piano, uh, trill on the celeste for a couple minutes. Um, and when I got that part, I thought, okay, I can, I can, it's the only thing you play in the whole symphony. I can, I can handle this. And then it turns out the conductor thought that this trill was like a sort of moment of transformation and climax within the symphony. And then he wanted everyone to play a triple piano so that my trill in a high soft register was audible the whole time. I was at home trying, you know, practicing my trills and trying to stay loose and, you know, no tension, all the things that you think about as a pianist. Another thing that always catches me off guard and is difficult uh, for me as a pianist in the orchestra is the idea of improvising. Sometimes I'm asked just out of the blue to improvise crazy stuff like, um, um, our music director, Terry Fisher, on one of his first Haydn symphonies with the, with the orchestra. Um, we finished the first movement at the first rehearsal, and he said, now 
At this point in the concert, harpsichord will improvise a two-minute cadenza that will lead us gracefully into the second movement. And, and I had like no note, like a couple days notice in which to deal with thinking up some, some material that might get us from one movement to the other. And also that didn't help that our music director specifically told me don't ever do it the same way twice. So it wasn't like I could compose a cadenza that was just perfect and leave it. It had to be different every night. Similar thing happened with a, a, a pop show we played where a conductor told me we need you to improvise in the style of Liberace while I make some announcements. And I could just feel people around me wanting to snicker while I am, you know, just noodling away in the style of Liberace. So one of the more stressful pieces in the orchestral piano repertoire is uh, Stravinsky's Petrushka. And there's uh, a couple of moments where the piano plays alone. A great uh, moment in the second scene where um, the main character, Petrushka, is uh, sort of getting riled up and angry. And so there's this piano cadenza that um, conveys this emotion, I think, rather well.